In today's episode, we're checking out a guitar that fits in a backpack. This is the part I want to talk about. This is the neck. So that's a little different. Uh, that's one piece, one element. So let's go ahead and put this thing together. Okay. So after we open this up, there's another compartment. And now you have a headstock <laughs> and it has strings. And don't worry, everything will be fine once I do that. Okay. This is what I want to show you. So you see there's a problem. You have a headstock and you have a body. Okay. So you have a full size body. Set that here. Now you have a neck and you have these two rods that go right into here, into this. And now you have a complete neck. Pretty crazy, right? And then just like all the other guitars, kind of connects right there into that latch and it already locked in, you can see. Now I haven't tightened it, but still it's pretty safe. Okay, so now we're gonna do is push back and there's a turning mechanism here. This is the same mechanism they use on the acoustic guitars. And now we have, voila, a fully full-size electric guitar. And that's why on today's Know Your Gear, we'll be taking a detailed look, the Journey overhead electric backpack travel guitar called the OE990. And of course, the first thing we see is a string retainer. That's because the headstock is straight. There's no break angle, so we gotta get the angle down to those tuning keys. You have a retention system here that's obviously keeping the strings from falling out of the nut. And then the nut is really just to space the strings as they go over the zero fret. Now, between the nut and the zero fret is a black spacer. It looks like it's part of the nut, it's not. I'm pretty sure it's there because the headstock detaches. Then you have 22 nickel frets on a rosewood fretboard that is 25 inch scale. The neck also includes a dual action truss rod and two carbon fiber rods for reinforcement to make the neck really strong a solid poplar body. I don't know how many pieces and we'll see if we can figure that out later. And then a maple veneer, and this is just a veneer. You have a string through bridge and then you have two humbucker pickups. We'll get into those and a volume tone and a three-way switch. And that tone control is also a push-pull coil split for those humbuckers. Now, some cool artistic choices are these cutaways. There's a cutaway on the upper horn and then a cutaway for the access along with this really nice arm carve right here. And a lot of this is functional, but most of it is cosmetic. Looking at the back of the guitar, we can see we have locking journey labeled tuning keys. The manufacturer of origin says it's made in China. And of course we have a maple neck where the joint where the headstock meets the neck. And this is the body right here with string through. And then of course the locking mechanism that gives journey the ability to detach the neck and travel with a very small footprint if you want to take it on overhead on a plane. Now it's time for the geeky stuff. Taking a look at the action, it looks like we're sitting at 2.25 millimeters off the 12th fret, which is about 0 0.10, so this is playable out of the box, but most players would want a little lower. So now let's check the relief on the neck to see how straight it is. We'll do that by pushing our first finger on our left hand on the first fret, and then our thumb from our right hand on the last fret, and go ahead and tap somewhere around the 12th fret, and you can see the string is moving, so we have a little bit of relief. The neck is not perfectly straight, but it's pretty close, looks nice. Now on their website, they say that this neck is a C shape. Now I'm using a 59 Les Paul template for two reasons. One, because I want to show you how thick this neck is. And two, I want to show you that I don't see it as a C shape. So let me explain why. First, let's go ahead and check the 11th fret. And you can see right here, see that big gap right there? That's where the neck kind of flattens out like a U shape. And you can also see from the side of the template how thick this neck is. So measuring the neck thickness at the first fret, we have 24.19 millimeters or 0.095 two, which is pretty thick. On the 12th fret, we have 26.23 millimeters or 1.032. Looking at the fretboard, we see it's at 16 inch radius. It's not compound, so it goes all the way from the top to the bottom, which is just a little flatter than something like Gibson would make at 12 inch radius. Their website says the nut is 1 and 11 sixteenths, which fits with the 42.54 millimeters or the 1.6 width and the 12th fret at 51 millimeters or just over two inches. Now we in the guitar when it's all put together is seven and a half pounds, which is pretty light. Let's take a look at the neck system. This is the system that's designed to release the neck and then of course connect the neck back to the body. Now what's nice about the system, it's very robust and I trust it because I've done two reviews of their acoustic guitars and they're using the same exact system. So it's pretty smart. They basically said, hey, look, we have this system. Let's finally apply it to an electric guitar, which I think is smart. And the abuse I put the other guitars through, I would really believe this is gonna take pretty decent amount of abuse. Let's go ahead and check each fret. Oh, 
Okay, so checking the frets, I don't see any dead spots or any buzzing, no issues there. However, something to point out is, I mean, it's pretty hard to play up here. They did this great job uh, taking this material away um, on both sides, but the problem is it's the mechanisms like I said, we talk about the handshake where we hold the guitar like this. The mechanism is there. I mean, it's poking you right there in the hand. The block is kind of thick. I mean, that's not gonna be the biggest issue when you're talking about a guitar that can basically fit in an overhead uh, or the front <laughs> in front of your seat on an airplane. However, that's something to think about is, you know, if that's something that matters to you, it doesn't really matter to me. I don't really play a whole lot up there, but we do have to talk about the frets. And I just want to hear that, listen to this. Very gritty. They need to be polished. I mean, they they need polishing bad. Now that we've checked how they've leveled the frets, let's check the fret and dress. That's how well they rounded over the frets. And you can see already the, the snags happening to our hands. It's pretty scratched up. I definitely have to give this a two and a half, maybe a three out of five. Let's go ahead and check the bass side and it's about the same. You'll see it snagging again. And just to give you an idea, the reason why I use the nylon sock is because it's very sensitive. So this isn't like they're gonna scratch up your hands, it's just they don't feel very nice to the touch. And let's go ahead and look at them and you can see they're not highly polished. In fact, none of the frets are highly polished. You can see some corrosion there on the frets. So maybe they detailed them when they first built the guitar, but obviously taking a boat trip across the ocean and then sitting in a warehouse, these frets have kind of just a little corroded. Taking a look inside the electronics, we see a few things. First, we're gonna see a 500K potentiometer. It's non-branded, but it's a small alpha size potentiometer. Obviously it looks inexpensive, but fine. And then of course, there's a 500K push-pull potentiometer for the coil splitting on the pickups. You have a very basic three-way blade switch that's mounted to a board, so nothing exciting there. And you have a 0.22 microfarad capacitor for the tone control. All of this stuff looks very similar to what you see in guitars that are under $300 all the time. There's no shielding tape or paint in the cavity. I checked and it's not underneath any kind of finish. It's always nice if they go the extra mile, but in some cases it doesn't matter. Looking at the output jack, there's a couple things I noticed. First, I'm happy that they're using a metal plate to mount it to the body, but the plate is super thin. I don't think that's gonna be a huge issue. It's just interesting to me how thin they keep making these plates. I mean, it's getting almost paper thin. The other thing is it's reusing a very inexpensive output jack. You can see here, it's very thin. To give you a reference, sometimes I think that's the problem is you're looking at something and it looks like everything else. Here's what a $6 Switchcraft output jack looks like. You can see how robust it is. It is and how much abuse it's going to take over the other output jack. Looking at these pickups, we can see the bridge pickup is got capacitance at about 11k, which is seems like a lot of wire. And looking at the inductance, we are at 3.88. So let's look at the neck pickup. And looking at the neck pickup, we are showing 11.6k for resistance, which is almost identical to the bridge. That variance is not very much. Let's go ahead and look at inductance, 3.61. So interesting that they're almost alike. We'll have to look into that more. Looking at the pickups, we can see there's no uh, brands or anything to kind of distinguish them. One thing I notice is there's an N, which usually means neck, but if you go and look at the bridge pickup, it also has an N. So the fact that they metered the same and they look the same and they both have the same markings could either mean that they messed up and stuck two neck pickups in this guitar, or they just specced it out like this. Again, we don't know for sure. Now, another thing we want to take a look at since we have the pickups out is we can verify that it is a veneer as the maple top doesn't go down very much. And you can see that they clear coated in here, even though it was kind of messy. I want to show you here the mechanism again from this side. You can see where it lets you detach and attach the neck. And there's even a little plate right here that helps you line it up with the neck. So again, everything very well thought out, easy to connect the neck and easy to disconnect the neck. Now this is the part in the video where I compare the prices of this guitar to other guitars. And I have to say every once in a while, something comes across that's pretty unique and hard to compare. This guitar is $499. That includes the deluxe gig bag. And when you compare it to the guitars I've actually reviewed on this channel, like by Traveler that were $850 or their cut down version, which is still five, $600. And if we compare it to a full size, cause that's what this is. One of the least expensive LTDs is still a hundred dollars more than this. If you look at Hoffner and Donner guitars, they make some brooms looking travel guitars that aren't very exciting, but less money. And there is a company I reviewed called Close Guitars, which I thought was a better guitar, but it was two and a half times the price. And the next system isn't as easy to take off as this. So before we get into uh, playing it and the sound, I wanna talk about stability of tuning, the tuning stability. It's staying pretty in tune pretty well. Um, 
putting it together, it kind of clicks in really fast, tunes up really fast, holds tune really fast. So that they seem to have gotten down. I think part of the reason why the neck is so chunky is probably for stability. Uh, that's what I would guess. I would imagine that this has to be a certain thickness to take the abuse you're gonna put this thing through. <laughs> so there's that. Um, so so I, not a lot of issues there. So let's get into playing. Uh, right now we're plugging into a uh, Yamaha THR32, which is the second edition or the Mark II, and I'm running the clean. A little bit of reverb. Running an SM57 mic'd up on the actual amp, and then I have a room mic. The pickup sounds very pleasing, very warm. Personally, I have a little trouble playing the neck. It's a little thick. It's not a quality thing. Quality feels good. The way it's put together feels good. It's just a little chunky, and I'm not used to playing a thicker neck like this. Okay, middle position. Clean. Let's go to the bridge. And again, not very harsh. Little on the highs, a little bit of attack on the highs. It's not really twangy. Sometimes the bridge pickups on guitars get a little too much on the brights for me. I want to go back to the neck and now I'm going to go coil split it. My guess is the middle on the coil split would sound pretty good. And of course a bridge. Okay, now we have an overdrive setting. How about some final thoughts on this? Well, there's a lot to say that it's really cool about this guitar. Obviously, uh, I've been on flights where if I didn't have something like this, I would have been in a lot of trouble. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't uh, check the guitar because uh, I want to make sure it got there with me. And also, I was in a situation where they didn't have room in the overheads. And so they were telling me I had to check it. Where this is small enough 
And I did something with this uh, with a close guitar that I had where that one wasn't like this. It wasn't like it came apart into a backpack. What happened when that one was is I could unscrew it because it's carbon fiber neck. I could unscrew the bolts, take the neck off and shove it in a backpack. And then they let me take the backpack on the plane. So I was there, I showed up on time and I had my guitar. So that's one thing that this can do. This can guarantee there's probably no situation where you're not gonna be able to take this on a plane uh, because like I said, you could just do this as your carry on. And whether they have space overhead or not, it'll fit underneath the spot in front of your feet. It does come with a little uh, amplifier. It's not high end, but it's something to use. I don't really have a way to demo it as it just goes in your headphones, but it's just a little amplifier. And it's nice that it's just included with the packaging. It's kind of a nice little thing. So you're ready to go. You get this, once this is delivered to you, you can take it out of the box and go. It comes in a couple colors. It comes in a red burst that looks nice and a blue burst. And of course this is a trans black. And it's a really cool concept the fact that it folds up. The whole point of this is to give you a full-size guitar. It does feel exactly like a full-size guitar because it is, it's 25 inch scale, it's a full-size body. I mean, it does everything it says, but really gotta be honest, the star of the show on this is the price point. $500 comes with a deluxe gig bag, which is the backpack with the locking keys and all these features. I mean, you could probably upgrade these pickups, but I don't see why. Like I said, I think it's just for you to go and, uh, and have some fun. And it takes a lot of abuse. Like I said, I've actually tried a bunch of their guitars, especially the acoustics, and the mechanism seems to hold up. Everything seems to hold up. This one taking a little bit of abuse. They sent this to me, and uh, even though I was trying to get the video out fast enough, I still spent a few weeks with it, because again, for that reason, I took it apart, put it back together. I even, I think I put a small ding in it, somewhere around here, uh, because I was doing something when I was testing it, and uh, I, I know I did, I can't find it. Like I said, I was putting it through its paces. So very cool guitar. That's it. <laughs> it's the highs and the lows. All right, guys, as always, I want to thank you so much for your time. Till the next time, know your gear. Now, just remember, the builders who send these guitars for my review have a drive to make great guitars. They agree to send non-cherry-picked instruments and let me try to find the best and the worst points of their guitar. Nothing I say or show is meant to take away from their hard work, dedication, and I applaud their ability to check their egos at the door and share their workmanship with us. Let's face it, most companies are not willing to do this.